Welcome to In Depth. We begin tonight with a walk through a hospital corridor and saying goodbye to a teenage boy who left this world way too early. Let me emphasize first before you watch this, the family of Mason Bogard has given us permission to present this video. You'll see a small part of it here. It is Mason being taken by staff at Deaconess Midtown Hospital to donate his organs. Good job, bro. Good job, buddy. I love you. Good job, Mason. Mason Bogard was 15 years old. His death remains under investigation, but his mother says he participated in what's called a choking challenge. The Vanderbilt County coroner told me today the death will remain under investigation for weeks due to toxicology tests and witness interviews. Dr. Jim Schrader is a licensed psychologist specializing in children and families, and he has authored several books. And he is a parent, he is a father. And Dr. Schrader, thank you so much for joining us thank tonight. You. Uh, if you can take the psychologist cap off for just yeah. a minute your your initial reaction to what you just saw um sadness to be honest i mean i'm inspired by the fact that um he will help others live on past what he has been able to do but i as a father i can't help but feel just very sad um that it's come to this point you know and that the family has to kind of cope with what's happened there so i think we all as parents if you see that um, you just kind of feel that run through you, and it's difficult to kind of step away. And although Mason's cause of death has not been officially released, right. it'll take some time, it has renewed conversation about kids taking risks. How do we talk to our children about these uh, games that often are imposed upon them by their peers? Right. I think the first thing we have to think about is to have the conversations earlier than the crisis happens, right? And so what I would say to parents first is don't be afraid to have conversations with your younger kids, even when things seem kind of minor, even when maybe the shows they're watching don't seem to be a huge deal or commercials are kind of brief. Um, I think that's to start earlier than a crisis is such a key for a lot of issues that we face. But the other thing is that uh, allowing kids to take the lead when they come home with questions, you know, I think our gut reaction sometimes as parents is, whoa, I don't know how what I'm going to say, mm -hmm. and I'm a little bit concerned about saying anything. But we, we, would, we would ask, and as a parent myself, is that when your kids come home with questions, um, consider what, one, it's great that they're coming to you, and two, how can we use this as a kind of a teaching moment to be able to help them work through the things that they're wondering about themselves. It's so important to listen, not only for the it is. kids to listen to their parents, but for the parents, parents to, to listen to the kids. Absolutely. Why is it so enticing for children, especially as they are approaching those teen years, right. uh, to, to take these risks basically on a dare? What, what, what triggers that? So two things parents have to know. One, especially when we're talking about the teen years, they're really going through a psychosocial stage of what we would call kind of role identity versus role confusion. What we mean by that is that it's particularly important as teenagers to kind of identify with you know, what the peers that they might have as friends, kind of feel, to figure out where they're fitting in. So things that we might see as being you know, really irrational, for them, if, if it's a means of fitting in or a means of kind of identifying themselves to other people, it might seem more enticing, and we have to be understanding of that. The second thing is we also have to know that their brain development um, is far from being mature and far from being fully developed. And so we look at, you know, research has indicated that skills like impulse control and decision making and emotional regulation are really kind of at their height point in those teen years, even the, even into the early 20s. So you think about they really want to identify with peers. There's a lot of development going on and it makes it prime for these issues to occur. And Jim, as you well know, one of the most difficult topics to talk about for people, they don't like to talk about it, is suicide. Right, uh, absolutely. But there is a Netflix show that has been on uh, 13 Reasons Why, mm -hmm. and it has had an impact on the suicide rate. Tell me about that, especially among those right. young people. So it's interesting, this was released back in March of 2017. Mm -hmm. um, when it was released, there was a lot of questions and controversy. Some, some said that it was drawing a claim because it allowed for conversations to happen. But many critics would say at that time, they were concerned that the vivid nature and the way it almost glorified suicide could potentially promote greater suicide risk among teens. 
Well, a couple of years later, researchers have just come out recently with a large scale study, and although they can't absolutely attach causation to what happened, what they found was that the month immediately following the release, there was almost a 30% increase in suicide rates among kids ages 10 to 17. And even the months following, there was an increase that just could not be accounted for by any other factor that they looked at. So again, I think we have to consider as parents that sometimes, and even educators, I think we really underestimate the influence and power of media, um, especially for these kids, and especially for our teens who have a lot of development left to go. And there is so much information so in much. this that is just inundating uh, kids and adults too. Right. But uh, being a parent, what is the difference between a parent for a child and a friend for a child right. that's a, that's a that can get you into it's a challenging times. place and i think never is it more challenging than when some of the biggest threats that you have for your kids come within your own home right if you think about even 20 years ago many of the threats came from the outside but now with devices especially parents are having to figure out how to navigate that my kid has access potentially to all sorts of things that i would not want them to have access to the other issue that parents have to realize, it's not just the content of what's coming in, it's the amount that's coming in. The average teen girl, for example, will text or Snapchat or face, you know, um, any of those kind of online platforms 4,000 times a month, they will send out wow. those messages. So think about this, even if the messages going out are not of illicit content, you and I, when we were going through high school, and you know, it sounds pretty old, right? But the internet was For not me, around. Definitely. Okay. <laughs> the internet was not really at the point when I graduated in 1995. It was not being used at that point at all. So we had a lot already to do. But today's teens and youth are inundated with all sorts of communications and just information. And honestly, they're struggling. They're struggling to know what to do with it. Well, Dr. Jim Schrader. Uh Thank you so much for yeah, joining us tonight. So we'll much. continue this conversation because this is such a fluid it is. time that we are, are living in, especially for our kids. Thank you so much. And, and you've got a lot of experience. You've got you've got kids and uh, yeah. so you live it from both sides. I do. I do. Every day. So. All right. Thank, Thank you. you so much.